Hello everyone, this is Under the Mayo. Welcome to another episode of Profiles in Gaming Enthusiasm, and today I'm joined by one of our legends in the Resident Evil YouTube community, JJ. JJ, how are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Thank you for that. That was a very kind way to bring me in. I uh, <laughs> do appreciate you bringing me on. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the chat today. Yeah, um, I should introduce you as JJ of of residents of evil is that how I, I should uh, introduce you to to those who maybe don't know yeah. you uh and that's, that's perfectly fine. Real, real quick um can give us a rundown of uh of what you do on your channel okay so uh the residents of evil is the home of survival horror pretty much all things resident evil uh we cover the latest news uh we discuss the latest rumors uh we do interviews with the cast and voice actors um we do live action content we play the games we have discussions about it we have a podcast uh we showcase fan games and mods and uh we tap into some other survival horror games outside of resident evil but it's primarily resident evil um there's a lot there's a lot and how did you get into it what what was what was the genesis of of what you do long story or short story cuz i mean it's it, it goes back a ways um well you know this is this is all about you so uh, how about we start with uh how you got into these kinds of games in the first place all right taking it all the way back to 1998 um uh, my cousins actually my older cousins got a playstation for christmas and uh i didn't have i had a super nintendo at the time so when i went over there we all went into their parents bedroom while the grown ups were outside you know or out in the living room area and uh they had a brand new PlayStation and two brand new games. And I remember them to this day, full sealed. It was uh, the original Resident Evil 2 and Metal Gear Solid. Oh, and I remember... Man, you're speaking yeah. my language. Like those... It, yeah. <laughs> Going back now, those are like two of the most iconic games in gaming yeah, history. Absolutely. And, you know, we didn't know that at the time. And I just remember looking at both of them and both looked really cool. But there was something about Resident Evil 2 that it just, it grabbed me. Uh, you know, the 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 cover art, um, the back of the case and going through it, I was like, this is the one we got to play first. So yeah. um, we booted it up. Uh, the first character we played as was Claire Redfield. And man, from that moment the game started, I was completely hooked. Uh, it was unlike anything I've ever played before at that time. It was, uh, I like to explain it as it was, it was just as terrifying as it was like intriguing. Uh, yeah. It pulled me in. Did you die uh, right it, away in the first part because you didn't oh, yeah. understand tank controls? We were, we were terrible. I, yeah, I wasn't yeah. <laughs> playing. I was, you know, I was, I was a little too young, uh, but my, my cousins were playing and we were, we were not good at it, but uh, yeah. there was just something about it that was so unique. Uh, it was like playing a, a horror movie and I wasn't used to that. I'm used to Super Nintendo and DOS games, you know, um, but it was just, it just, I guess it was between the locations, the characters, the music, the graphics, it just pulled me and it was just something so original for me at the time. And, uh, and to us not getting very far, I remember playing it all night that night. And then shortly after we had a, a, a snow day at school. Cause we, you know, we live in way up in the frozen tundra. So we get snow days and, uh, they're like, you're, you're never going to believe it. Uh, we actually got to a police station and at that time we're like, oh my God, that that's crazy. You know? So we went to the, so right after we got the snow day and I went to their house and we just played it all day. You know, it was it was something very special because I got to share that moment with my older cousins, which I really looked up to. And it was just such a unique game at the time that from that that moment on, I was I was hooked. And then that led me into Resident Evil 1, which then was Resident Evil 3 and, and so on and so forth. Uh, fast forward to um, Capcom originally teased a Resident Evil 2 remake, I think way back in 20, 2012, I want to say. It was, it was way back. It was before the We Do It. And um, they said if fans asked nicely, uh, we'll do it. And so, like, at that time, you know, I loved the original games. Um, and uh, I wanted to do anything I could to help get a remake of Resident Evil 2. And it all was because a Resident Evil 1 remake was incredible. Right. It's um, still it's still the top. It, it's still the representation of Resident Evil to me is the, is the, the GameCube remake. That is what Resident I, Evil is to me. I completely agree. I think while the original Resident Evil 2 is my favorite game of all time, I do think the Resident Evil 1 remake is is literally Resident Evil perfection. Yeah. That's for me personally, yeah. And um, you know, and be after right after I got done with that, you know, there anything I could do to get a Resident Evil 2 in that same style, like I was on board. So, I got online and um 
I'm from a very small town. Um, I don't really have a lot of people around here that I can talk to about Resident Evil. And I had no idea at that time how massive the Resident Evil community was online. I was very like, um, it's just like once I got online and I was, you know, trying to find whatever I could do, you know, find groups or whatever. I was blown away by the amount of people that I, I ended up finding. Um, it was actually really nice. And I found this this uh, Facebook page, Remake Resident Evil 2, and they had a petition. So I signed it. It actually inspired me to start my own um, fan page for Resident Evil, which was the Residents of Evil. Um, and um, long story short, I'll try to wrap it up. But uh, so it inspired me to start mine, and I ended up becoming friends with the page owner. And you know, we both huge Resident Evil fans, and he brought me on as an editor. And so we were working together to push for a Resident Evil Two remake. Uh, you know, the best we could with um, putting together graphics and saying we want to remake and huh. all that. And then I remember the day that uh, the We Do It came out um, and both of us just messaged each other right away and we're like, oh my God, we finally, we're there. We It's it's coming, it's happening. Uh, that was one of the most hyped times. And then obviously that led up into the reveal. Um, but right around the time Resident Evil 7 came out, I was kind of like out of the Resident Evil series for a bit there. Um, I think. Four at the time. Now I do like four now, but when I first played it, I was not. It, it just was so different, and it was just so. It just didn't kind of. It just, it just didn't do it for you at the time. Yeah, it just. It, there's something about it. Like it was fun, but it just like wasn't the type of Resident Evil I was into. So I kind of right. started to move away. Uh, five came out, and um, it, yeah, I just I just kind of moved away from the series. I, I just understand. I a huge fan of the original games, but uh, you know at that time I was. I tried. Uh, they had that one. Revelations had the episodic, and I wasn't. I wasn't really into that. You know, there's a few odds and ends I'd play here, but it was always the originals for me. Um, and so when Resident Evil Seven came out, I remember at E3, it was just I wasn't expecting that. And when they announced Resident Evil Seven, I was like, "Holy crap!" You know, uh, it's just I wasn't. It, it was so different from what I was used to. But the promotional campaign for it, the demo, the hype behind trying to figure out the finger demo. You remember? Do you remember that? Um, I got into RE7 after that point, so that I uh, that passed me by. Ah, I see, I see. It was just I, something I was kind of the... like you, where like I tuned out with five, uh, and then six I completely ignored, and then seven came out, and I was like, uh, oh, it's going back to horror. Okay, that's great. I'll, I'll get to it. And then I, I eventually yeah. played it maybe like half a year later or so, and, and I oh. liked it. And uh, so yeah, I, I missed the demo thing. Yeah. Okay. That 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 was it. Was incredibly hyped. There's something about that. And um, at the time, I was, yeah, it was right around the time where I was still kind of working at GameStop. I think I was transitioning into my new job, and I was working both jobs. I can't remember, but there was there was a lot of hype about it. A lot of people were excited. I was I was starting to get to chat with a lot of people, you know, about Resident Evil, and uh, seeing that it was horror focused again. It was so different. I was interested. And uh, when I played it, I was like, okay, this is very different from what I'm used to, but it's it felt like a, a huge step back in the right direction. Yes. Um, yeah, it, like, it went back to the, the roots of Resident Evil. And while it's not 100% perfect, uh, it definitely, in my opinion, was far closer to the original Resident Evil games than, say, 6. Yeah, um, well, I mean, <laughs> hey, dude, like, hard to hey, anything is closer than original, original Resident Evil than, than 6 is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And, uh, you know, so that like right after I remember finishing it and being like, man, that was, that was, I'm, I'm back into it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like the only thing I really want to do right now is go back to the beginning resident evil one. I want to, I have a lot I want to talk about. Um, I want to go kind of catalog my experience of going back through this series. Um, and I was kind of streaming on Twitch here and there, uh, my own channel and I was like, I'm going to start a YouTube channel now, Residents of Evil, where I go through the series. Um, I get to, you know, relive that with other uh, Resident Evil fans. And I can also talk about, you know, what I what I all my thoughts that I had, because there's a lot I wanted to, you know, go over. Um, so, yeah, it re, re sparked my passion for the Resident Evil series. Uh, and then that's where the Residents of Evil came in. And then, you know, fast forward to now. Um, it's just uh, in incredible uh, that I found this community uh, of like-minded Resident Evil fans and have had so many opportunities to meet a lot of the actors and, you know, the heroes from my childhood. Uh, so I'm very grateful and I'm very um, glad to be part of this community. Yeah, that's great. Speaking of which, like you've been able to meet the actors, like what 
what would you say is the focus of your channel? Like, what are the kinds of things that you like to do on there? Gameplay, retrospectives, reviews, interviews? Like, what do you what do you like to focus on? Um, so there's a few things that are my favorite things. Like, I love um, checking out fan games and mods from the community. Uh, you know, the like the overhaul mods. There's just so much passion in this uh, community and so much talent that some of the stories that come out of it are incredible. And I love checking out something that looks interesting or, um, you know, you can tell somebody that's very passionate about the series, put a lot of time into, and then you try it and you're like, wow, this is like, it, it's not canon, but it's like its own story set within the Resident Evil universe that fits really well. And it's just super cool to try. That's one of my favorite things to do. But honestly, um, getting to play the original Resident Evil 2 with Paul Haddad has got to be like hands down. Hmm. One of my favorite things uh, I've ever done in my entire life. Uh, so I would say like getting to meet childhood heroes is probably super cool. And and some of the things that we've gotten to do, like uh, meeting Charlie Krevzlowski, um, getting to do, um, you know, The Keeper's Diary, uh, a biohazard story, an original uh, Resident Evil inspired fan film. Um, yeah. But Apollo Dad is probably like m- my yeah. top most exciting uh, moment. That's awesome. The, uh... You said that this is about being part of the larger Resident Evil community, uh, but I, I'm curious. There's, there are fans of the original games, and then there are fans of new Resident Evil, and there are fans yeah. of like RE5 style Resident Evil, and there's there's definitely overlap, right? Like I like yeah. I like some of the new stuff. I don't like other parts of the new stuff, and then I like all the old stuff. Uh, but do you find yourself getting uh, mostly overwhelming support for your love of the old titles, or do you do you get that flood of people who are because you, you know you, you you've you've yeah, you've definitely. you know <laughs> right I know, I know I can get yeah yeah the the you're blinded by nostalgia crowd right the, yeah uh, the uh, the tank controls suck and yeah maybe tank controls suck but that doesn't mean the fixed camera angles are invalid. And uh, yeah. so what, what was the reaction to your enthusiasm for the RE2 fixed camera mod? Oh, it was, it was uh, incredibly positive. And I think that's because the way that uh, myself and the team um, approach the channel is we're welcoming to all fans. Obviously, there's, mm-hmm. the Resident Evil series has been going on now you know, for over, what is it, uh, coming up on almost, almost 30. 30 years, yeah. which is insane. Uh, so you know you're going to get a variety of fans in there. And we try to be welcoming of everybody because there is mom- there's aspects of all of the eras of Resident Evil that you can enjoy. And mm. uh, but primarily, a lot of people know that I love the classics. Yeah. Uh, you know, I can play them endlessly without getting bored. So one of the most exciting things is when I get to play like a, a classic Resident Evil mod, or we just do like a marathon of the old Resident Evil games. And the video does really well. I'm I'm not excited about the video numbers themselves. I'm excited because so many people still love mm-hmm. the original games and you know they comment all the time um you know how they fell in love with the series and it's incredible because so many people have very similar stories. I think that's why this community is so um passionate and so like it's a very strong community. And I think it's because we all share very similar stories of how we got into the series. Uh, but when I got when I played the the fixed cam mod, sure there were people that said they're dated, and that's fine. You know, like I I that, you know everybody's got an opinion. Well, I mean, um, look, I mean, two D platformers are dated, or are they not? I mean, like, but you can still make can a great two D platform. Like two D fighting games are. I mean, mm-hmm. do, does every fighting game have to be fully three D? And like, no, there's it doesn't things things everything was a product of limitations at their time. And it created us an aesthetic. It created a feel that we can that we can still love. We don't we don't have to leave everything in the past. We can iterate on it. There's there's so, like I've never ever understood that argument, and it seems to be tossed around specifically at fixed camera horror games and not at other genres and art art styles that were also products of their time. That's true. Um, it's so. The fixed camera angles, the tank controls, it's an artistic choice. It's a style. Um, you know, obviously, there's still so many fans of not only Resident Evil, but 2D platformers, all that, because the core mechanics of the game are there. Yeah. Obviously, they did something right to still be there. And it's just a stylistic choice. Now, 
it's odd because you know growing up with uh you know my cousins playing resident evil uh the classic games um you know they never got into the series as much as i did while we got into resident evil 2 i kind of kept going with it where they were playing a variety of other games and i remember when they showcased resident evil 2 remake and while i was so excited I was really hoping we would get like a you know the fixed cameras like we did. I was going to ask you remake. about that. Like, what was your yeah. reaction? Were you were you disappointed? I mean, I was disappointed. I I still really like the RE2 remake, and there's part of me yeah. that that there's a part of me that loves being able to look all around this police station. You know, I I I do enjoy that aspect of it. But there's uh, I don't know. I, I I did I did a video about this somewhere, but uh, th- that. There's a disappointment in us that has been there for almost two decades now because the RE1 GameCube remake was so good, it made us want those GameCube remakes of 2 and 3, and they never came. And so, they never came. And, and, and they were never even announced, right? But, but we were expecting them. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and to see the remake officially come out and be over the shoulder again, it's like... Oh no, we're never gonna get it, are we? <laughs> but I, I, yeah. despite how great it is, there's, and that's why the fixed camera mod, like I could see it in your face. Uh, like I, I don't know if you saw my video on the fixed camera mods, but I used some, cli- oh, yeah. some clips. Okay, cool. But uh, but like uh, clips of everyone from the scene, and it's like, wow, look how fucking happy everybody is. <laughs> it's it's you know it's tapping it, and I think what it is, um, is like you know I, obviously I was beyond excited for resident evil 2 we were petitioning for years and yeah. finally it was a reality it's finally happening there was a little piece of me that kind of was like oh that's gone you know but the, the excitement was i was i was i i come to terms with it but you know there is a piece of me that yeah, i feel old man like uh that 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 time frame we would have had has passed and yeah. it's it's never coming back and now this confirms it and I do like what you said. The the problem is the Resident Evil One remake was too good. Yeah, it was, it was too damn good. Um, and you know, so that's why you see so many people so excited when they're playing it is because we know that that ship may have sailed, un- unfortunately. Yeah. And I, I still I would still love to see. It. I still would. But at least now we finally have a look at what it could have looked like. Even if it's not official, it's still incredibly well done, yeah. and it's just tapping into what could have been. You know what I mean? Yeah, it gives us a taste, and and actually, it gives us more than a taste because it's fully playable, right? Like it's, yeah. and it's been updated to where um, my last playthrough of it was a lot smoother than the version I played when I did the review. Uh, yeah, and it's so like it's 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 workable. It's not it's not the real thing, but it gives you enough to to see how absolutely great this it could have been if it was a reality yeah and honestly i'm just so grateful again going back to the the community and how talented they are that somebody would take the time Mm -hmm. actually i never thought it was possible honestly because there were so many videos kind of showing you concept of what it could have been and you know i've worked with the free cam and it's it you have to set it every single room Mm -hmm. so that's why i was like oh you can't actually save these preferences but you can make a cool look at what could be but once I seen that, it was like somebody said it, it, it was crazy because it was out for a while. And usually immediately you'll see something on it. And they're like, you know, there's a, a fixed cam mod for Resident Evil 2 remake that's playable, right? And I was like, oh, you're probably talking about the concept videos. They're really cool. They're like, no, it's it's actually out. And I was like, oh, and it was like, it's been out for a week. And I was like, I got to try this. And as soon as I installed it and I was playing, it, I was like, oh, man, this is this is legit, actually real. I can play it. And it just came out of nowhere, people. right? It came out of nowhere. <laughs> and it was like it was it was so quiet for a while, too. Like I was surprised. Like and then, uh, you know, it, right around the time that I uh, released the the playthrough on it, um, it just like it must have caught on at that time before even like shortly before I released the video, it just I started seeing it flooding. And it was so awesome to see. Uh, so many people playing it and and being so excited and your video does a really good job of, of highlighting that but uh, it goes to show that there's still a lot of passionate classic Resident Evil fans out there you know that are probably fans of the newer ones too but uh the you know we're older but uh there's still a lot a lot of people that love that style what is it if I don't know if you could put it into words what is it that you like about the old fixed camera presentation of games what what, how does it make you feel what do you appreciate about it i think honestly it's like i'm a a huge fan of movies and i love horror movies. that's it that's it it feels like you're it feels like you're controlling a movie 
It really does. It's it's the director's choice on what they want you to see and how they want you to see it. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, there's something so memorable about specific shots of certain areas that stay with you. Just like yes. uh, the way I like to put it is each area has its own theme, which is not ambient. It's actually music, which I also love. Um, and and you always remember the areas for that. The, the same goes for the visuals of that area. Sure, you know, over the shoulder, you see the area, but it's not the same. You, the more you look at it, the more you focus on little details and, and the fixed, the, the pre-render backgrounds that Capcom did were incredibly well detailed. And I remember just being absolutely blown away when I first played it. But there's so much detail in there that every time you would, it's like one of those, um, not I Spy books. Well, I Spy books are just one of those books you would look at for hours as a kid and it would leave a lasting impression on you because you'd always notice some, oh, I didn't notice that or I didn't see that. Not only was it artistically styled to what the director envisioned, but you were looking at it so much that it kind of left that impression, just like the yes. music, the characters, you know, and it's, it's, it's an artistic style. It, it's a, it's, and I don't think it's dated at all. I think that is absolutely the wrong way to approach fixed camera angles. It's, it's a choice. Yeah. It, it, it makes you feel a certain way. And we're, I, I, I communicate this all the time that we are willing to give up a certain amount of gameplay control of like, oh, sometimes you can't see a, a, an enemy, they're off screen, or like sometimes you walk and then the camera changes and it disorients you. Like we're willing to to put up with with the negatives for yeah. the positives, right? It's a chain. It's it's, it's a you know it's a, it's a trade. Like we know that there are issues with this style of presentation, but we value the way that presentation makes us feel so much that we're yeah. okay with the negatives. And not everyone is, and fine, I, I, I respect that, but I mean, every style has its, has its downsides, but there's, I always, I've told this a million times, that when I was a kid, I would play Resident Evil 1, and my mom would just sit on the couch, on the, on the edge of the couch, and she would just watch the TV, and she would tell me, yeah. it, feels like, it feels like I'm watching a movie as I watch you play. She told me that as a kid, and that, that's always stuck with me, that people can yeah. watch it, and they're like, it's like they're watching a movie, because it's directed like one. That's very true, actually. That's a, that's a good point you bring up. And that's that's the thing is, like, I would watch my cousins play it. You know, I would try to play it, and I was garbage. Hmm. But I would watch them, and it was... it was, And that's why I don't like the argument that you can't uh, be a fan of something if you haven't played it, if you just watch a video. That is absolutely not true. If that's the case, well, then I, I guess I'm a, I'm a fake Resident Evil fan <laughs> because I used to watch them play it. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but there's something about it that is like watching a movie. Um, and... And I do think that even going back to what you said about the limit, we're willing to have limitations. Um, we're willing to have limitations for, you know, certain things. I actually would argue that the limitations are part of what made it so in, special. In some cases, absolutely it is, right? The, yeah. the, the feeling, like, it's something you only get in from fixed camera uh, horror games. That feeling of when you walk through a door and then the camera angle is now facing your character... And, yeah. and and it's pulled back and you hear you hear something yeah, off screen and yeah, you know yeah. that you're not going to get a view of this room until you take about 10 steps forward and the yep. camera changes that like that sort of tension some people would say that's bad game design because i can't see what's ahead of me like and then there's then there's us who are like that makes me so tense because that's like in a movie when like yeah the camera's facing the main character as they're looking around and they can't see the, the danger like it's that feeling and and uh it's it's something you only find in fixed camera horror games yeah 100 percent. It, it goes back to like like movies where it would show the character's reaction and you can hear something but you can't you're imagine it's left to yeah. your imagination and the more you can uh, the less you give somebody right and the more they start to speculate and think about it i mean that's i think honestly that's why like people love ada and hunk so much is because they don't really have a whole bunch a backstory there are these mystery characters and i think the more you give to these characters the less special it is because it's about that imagination you want to imagine what's in front of me i can hear it but i can't see it what is it i i hear it, it sounds mm -hmm. like a liquor but where is it you know what i mean yes. and 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 like as you said tension i think the resident evil series one of its like the top aspects of it is tension and it really ramps between one and three three the tension was at an all-time high with <laughs> nemesis yes. but it's it's a huge part of it and it's you don't want to play but it's a train wreck it's you don't you don't want to look but but you do and you can't look away it's the same thing with playing the classic games you don't want to play because it's so tense but you can't stop you know 
you just mentioned three. Uh, did you play three as soon as it came out? Uh, the original, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, because at that time yeah. I was, I was, I was sold on the series, right? I went yeah. right from two. My dad said a friend of his at work actually has uh, Resident Evil One, and uh, he let me borrow it. And I, rem- and this is before my parents knew what I was playing, because that- then they tried to put a stop to it. <laughs> but at that time, I remember getting the the long box, the uh, strategy guide, and at that, that time I got a PlayStation because I know after after playing my cousins, I had to get one. Um, and uh, and then I just got super um, like immersed into that. And then shortly after, I remember picking up a magazine and seeing the artwork for Resident Evil Three and. Dude, I was I was like, all right, I'm in. Let's go. Wait, was <laughs> it that day one. was it um, official PlayStation magazine with Nemesis on the front? It's kind of like a dark green background. And he's like standing there. It's like on the side or something like that. I, it was it was the one that had Nemesis. The like it looked like a like it's it was like real. Like it was like somebody with like Nemesis makeup on. So at that time, oh. I thought I thought he was like a, a mutated zombie, and that's what they kind of. Uh, promoted him as was like a mutated zombie but once I got in the game I was like he looks nothing like that he's way bigger but you know was that one where he had like his hand up and he was like had his head turned and he had his like teeth gnarled yes gnarled yes teeth. actually you know what um I I will uh I'll put these images in the video let me let me mark the time uh, yeah it's uh 2027 20, all right I'm gonna send it to you it's this one right Yes, that okay. was if they had that artwork in the magazine. Yeah. Well, this is I what I, this, is, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, okay, that one I don't remember. There that, was a few, yeah. another one with Jill on it that was like artwork that I remember picking up. There was actually one that had the Resident Evil Two comic book that came with it, and and my my grandpa owned a grocery store, so what he would let me do is he would let me. Um, you know, take them home, look at them, but I would have to bring them back. I think that one he actually let me keep, but it came, they always had demo discs too. It was so cool. Cause I would go through them yes. and I'd find the demo discs, I'd play them and then I'd put it back and, you know, I'd put it on the shelf. So I got to try so many games, but it had the resident evil two comic book with it. There was one that I had and do that thing was like, the artwork was incredible wow, in that. And I, that. Oh, you never, you never no, did. Yeah. No. I cherished that thing, man. And I used to look at it all the time. And then I brought it out to our family cottage and I left it there. And when I came back, it was gone and it devastated me. Uh, well, but you, I think that's that those ahead. pictures. Yeah. I think, yeah I think well, you, picture... you must, you must have been uh, really hyped for three as it was about to come out. Then like me, I had, yes. I had an entire wall of my bedroom covered in Resident Evil three articles. I oh, was, that's cool. I, I went nuts, man. Like any any magazine I could find, I bought it just for to put one article on the wall. The whole wall was covered in it, and so three for me was I, I like that's why uh, um, I I was so hard on the RE three remake because uh, three oh. is my favorite of the original trilogy. Even though I started with one, and I yeah. and I got I, and I got two, and then three. There was something about the hype for three. The experience of Nemesis, the exploration of the city, the city of RE3 Nemesis is so good, and I, I just absolutely fell in love with that game because when I played two, see, this is interesting. You played two as your first Resident Evil game. That's yeah. such a different experience because I played two after already knowing one inside and out, and so two. While I love the spectacle of it, I love the the art, I love story and the music and i love everything about it yeah gameplay wise i didn't enjoy it as much because it felt really easy to me because i was already good at resident evil by that time and so you already had your first experience exactly part part of part of the challenge of a resident evil of a classic resident evil game is one getting used to how it plays the controls figuring out what you're supposed to be doing figuring out that you need to be managing your resources i had already figured that shit out and so RE2 original came out and it just wasn't like I breezed through it, man. It took me a few hours. Uh, I completed it and I was like, that was great. But man, like I, I felt like I was never really in any danger because I was already ready for it. Uh, and yeah. then three is where it shook me up with Nemesis. I'm like, oh, OK, here we go. Now something that's actually challenging me. So that was my only that's the only reason why two is my least favorite of the original trilogy, even though I love it. Cool. Out on a yeah. gameplay experience, it didn't satisfy me. It, which I don't know. Maybe some other people have had that experience. It's probably not many, but but yeah, that's how it worked out for me. 
feel really sorry for you, but I totally understand. <laughs> I still love it. I still yeah. love it, right? But like I was yeah. just I was just mowing through everything, unfortunately, and I didn't I didn't feel the tension because I had already felt the tension before in the in the first game. So. You can't unlock hard mode until after you beat yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah, it like, didn't have a hard great. mode or anything, so I just uh, I was like, oh well, damn, that was great. But fuck. Yeah. <laughs> well, now looking looking back at it, I feel like the B scenario, like if you play it like the canonical order, uh, Claire A, Leon B, I do feel like the B scenario is the definitive scenario in that yeah, game. B scenario which is, is weird good. because in the Resident Evil 2 remake, I feel like Claire A, or uh, yeah, Claire A is the definitive scenario. But, oh wait, was it Claire? Yeah, Claire A, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in the original Claire A, Liam B, and I feel like B with, with Mr. X, like that's, that's kind of like the perfection of the original, but yes, nemesis, the tension, I, I feel like Resident Evil 3 is such, uh, an incredible, like conclusion it is to it. that original trilogy and not just for the story and raccoon city but for like the gameplay mechanics and everything it's like it started with one and you could feel how it's like really polished in three it's really a, it's it's annoying because i'm sure you've heard it when people try to dismiss re3 by saying oh it was just a spin-off that got you know got the re3 name slapped onto it so that it could sell and it's like you know what okay it, if at some point they decided that fine but w whenever they did decide that the direction they decided to take went really well and it was n like people yeah. people will say you know it was it was a rushed out title and it was not re2 came out in january of 98 and re3 came out in november of 99 that's almost two years yeah right so i mean that's it, still it's, it's full what they did it, it's years. a fully developed title it's just such a great title. It's it's yeah. underrated. It's underappreciated, but it's also widely loved. You know, it's not like it's not, yeah. it's, not, it's not like it's a niche title to love. A lot yep. of people love RE three. I mean, hell, RE three became a storyline in the movies before that's RE two, right? They went straight yeah. to Nemesis. That, that's that's it, that tells you everything right there. That people love Nemesis. They they skip to in the Paul Anderson films and then in Welcome to Raccoon City they skipped three. But going back to what you said um about uh, uh people that say that it feels kind of like it's um uh it's not a full game or it was just kind of like a DLC, it should have been a DLC. I completely disagree yeah. with that. Resident Evil 3 from the beginning to the end is a fully complete fleshed out story yes. that really explains the downfall of Raccoon City and puts a nice little bow on top of a perfect trilo uh, trilogy, in my opinion. A nice little uh, a yeah. atomic bow. <laughs> atomic bow. And, and and the you know the conclusion of Raccoon City after battling your way through two, for me two, then one, then three, um, and just falling in love with the series, it was very bittersweet. I was just as sad as happy as I was. Yeah. Like, it felt so rewarding. We finally did it, but did oh, it, man. Did it devastate you when they blew up Raccoon oh, City? Yeah, because it was like, like, it's like, done. What? That's it. It's all I, I, <laughs> I love the city. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, you, you just, you, uh, sorry, you just said something that that was really, really funny to me. You said that they skipped RE3 Nemesis in Welcome to Raccoon City, and I'm just, and I'm just trying to imagine if they had also tried to have Jill and Nemesis in that movie. If oh. they tried to tell one, two, and three in the same movie, oh. it would have been, it would have been such a disaster. That would have been more entertaining. Yeah, I mean, at that point, right? Why yeah. not just go all out with it? I yeah. think you know, it, there was a lot going on in the movie, and I, I, I mean, that that's a that movie would be a whole other podcast. Well, <laughs> there's a lot to talk about. Well, let, but, let's briefly. Yeah. Is there anything that you like about the Real, Welcome to Raccoon City movie? Um, I mean, there are people that enjoy it, and I'm very happy for them. Um, there are some aspects I like. Um, I did like the locations. You know, we finally get to see these. Um, brought to the big screen that mm -hmm. was really cool the music's pretty good okay. um um yeah i like the uh helicopter approach to the mansion in the woods yeah yeah uh, that, yeah that, it kind of it sets good. the mood of the original game and it, it makes you kind of see like see what that movie could have been if they just focused i think that's RE1. a lot of the problem though is it it kind of touches on what could be but isn't and i i mean honestly 
kind of feel like that. I felt like that a lot while playing Resident Evil 3 Remake. It, it really would tap into like, oh man, this could get really good. And then it, it's not. And yeah. so it's a lot of what, what could have been, you know, missed opportunity. And I, I think that movie, I think it promoted itself as a very faithful adaptation. And when you, when the photos, like at first I was like, ah, I don't know, man. Yeah. You know, we'll see. I'm, I'll, I'll keep my eye on it. And then when the photos start rolling out, I was like, oh, man, this actually might be a faithful adaptation. And at that point, I was kind of of the mindset that the, the, the characters of stories, you know, as a kid, I would have loved to see beat for beat. Right. But as I get older after the Paul Anderson movies, I was like, the characters are already told perfectly in the games. You know, why do we need to retell what's already done perfect? I would like to see new original story set within that world. Sure. But when those photos rolled out, I was like, okay, maybe it, you know, kind of got me back on board. But then to say it's a faithful adaptation, and while some elements are, others are not, it's kind of like either one or the other. Either you go full, fully faithful with a few liberties if you need to, you know, or yeah. you just go completely original and wherever, wherever you want to go. Yeah, they just crammed too much into it. They tried to have too many stories, you know. They had at least Trevor, they had the orphanage, they had the police station, they had the mansion, they had Jill and Chris and Leon and Claire and yeah. was Sherry and I don't fucking remember. It, it, there's, <laughs> it was just too, and what's so funny is that the problem with that movie is that they tried to connect RE1 and RE2 together yeah. as the same story when they are not connected. They're months apart, right? And yeah, then in yeah. the movie, there's an underground tunnel that literally connects the mansion to the the location of RE2. So they're literally connected in the movie yeah. as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I mean, technically, Resident Evil Zero, there was a connection to the underground laboratory and yes. resident evil 2 not from the spencer mansion but you know they did put that in but there they did get there yeah, they, they're, yeah there's not a physical corridor that that takes you from the mansion no, to no. the police station or something not how it works yeah yeah <laughs> dude that yeah, was no, it, that was the moment oh, that was the one moment where i was like yes when they when they solve the puzzle they do the piano puzzle and it opens the the wall and i was like yeah. more of that do that, all right? Just yeah. lean into the to the weirdness of the game, please. But they 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 just didn't. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, and I think it was just like you know, low budget, uh, trying to do too much in one film, uh, faithfully adapting some things while not doing others. You know, there you could you could discuss it forever and you know break it down. It did have some good aspects, but mm. at the at the end of the day, I, for me personally, it missed the mark. And um, you know. At that point, I was just like kind of like after all the Paul Anderson movies and then going into that. And and there is a part of the Paul Anderson movies I do appreciate. And there's some nostalgia tied to that. But sure. overall, you know, it just went so wacky um, that it's like, all right, you know, are we and now we're doing it again. And then we kind of get this. It's pitched as faithful. It's not faithful. Um, yeah, it kind of kind of burnt me a little bit on the movies. You know, I need something something to come around that kind of gets me excited again. There's something about that first Resident Evil movie. It's not a great movie, but there's something about the mood of it and the look of it that maybe it is yeah. just nostalgia for like when I saw it in the theaters. But it's it's got its own kind of character to it. It's, it's got an identity, which you know I, I respect about it. I do think it's a it's a it's a good zombie film. Yeah, um, it's a fine, the, it's a fine zombie film. Yeah, you know, when I when I first, uh, at that time when I was a kid and I went to see it for the first time, I always think I was coming off the George Romero Resident Evil 2 trailer because when I seen that, I was like, oh my God, is this going to be the movie? And, you know, online wasn't what it is then and it was super slow. So I'd like scour the internet for what is this Resident Evil 2 live action? And then shortly after I got really into that, then they announced the Resident Evil 1 movie. And um, and I was like, I was so excited, you know, at that time, there's like nothing more I wanted than a Resident Evil movie. And when I went to see it, there was a ton of nostalgia. I was like, all right, there's this from the game. There's this from the game. I didn't really realize at the time they were kind of trying to do their own original thing. I mean, by the end of it, I did. Uh, but there was a part of me that was like, oh, that was really cool. Yeah. You know, they had some really cool elements, but it's not what I was expecting at all, you know. And yeah, now looking really back not. at it, I, I kind of appreciate it a little more now knowing where it went and what it was um i'd say that probably personally is my favorite of all had, had a great ending you yeah know, it did it did that and then uh, her, her her friend is taken and they say put him in the nemesis program and we're all like what yeah. what what that was that was great um <laughs> that was cool the, um the 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 marilyn manson theme song he did the music that 
Like that was, it's got some cool music in there. It's got yep. that Slipknot song, I think. Uh, My Plague? My Plague, yeah. My favorite Slipknot song. That <laughs> album was fire. Yeah. Yeah, like that's, that was great. It's, just, it's, got, it's got some character. You know, I, I, yeah. I don't hate the first movie. And I, I and actually yeah. love the second movie. I mean, it's terrible, but I yeah. love that movie. It's so dumb and crazy and fun. And, and Jill's walking around in her in her tube top, and and Nemesis is shooting the chain gun, and it's it's yeah. so crazy and over the top that I I just I just kind of love it. I loved it when it came out. You yeah, know, when yeah. I first went to see it. Now I I would argue that it's actually really good up until Alice comes around. I, I would say it's definitely salvageable for people oof, that aren't aren't oof. a huge fan of that. Up until Nemesis comes around. And I get I get it. It's wacky. It's silly. But when you go back and watch it now, right, and you see how well they did that like Resident Evil 3 intro with the shaky cam and the mm-hmm. zombies in the streets, they did a really good job with so that. Impressive. It, it's kind of like playing a new fic, uh, a new third person remake, you know, to a fixed camera angle. You go back and you're like, oh, we're never going to get this again. <laughs> this, they're not, never going to do this again. They're never going to get. And some of that was really faithful and good. And like Jill looked great. Her outfit was great. The the cutscenes were great. The stars were cool. You know, that, that uh, raccoon city moment was really cool. Like there's arguably some really cool things in that. Yeah. And it's like nowadays, I don't think we would ever see that again. I think our time has passed for that. It wasn't perfect at all by any means. Um, right. But like that, yeah, I just I feel like that that was the window, and now that that is gone. So that might be the only time we see that sort of faithfulness to Resident Evil Three, even though it's not very faithful. But you do get what I'm trying to. Yeah, understand. That, I think what that's what the only. That's, I think that's the only time we'll ever. I mean, with the with the way that Re- Return to Raccoon City turned out, and with how pe- much people hate the TV show that has nothing to do with the games. Oh, I never watch that. I can't. I can't see a, an, an RE three style story getting greenlit in any capacity. No, don't watch the TV yeah. show, man. I, I, it's it. There's really not much redeemable about it. Not even on its, it, even not even as its own thing. Like if you don't even think, yeah. oh, I'm just gonna think it's not Resident Evil and just watch it as a show. As a show, it's just like not very good either. So. Yeah, I got to episode three and I was I was uh, absolutely kind of checked out at that point. I think I fell asleep on it. I tried to watch it twice. And and I I don't even know if I finished it. And at that point, I was like, you know what? I'm at the age right now where my time's very limited. Yeah. I got kids. I got a job. I'm, <laughs> I'm doing role things. You know, if I'm not into it, I'm actually gonna just just let it go. Step away. I'm just gonna <laughs> let it go. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna watch it and then be upset yeah. about it. I'm just gonna forget that it happened and just move on. You know, the, when when you're when you're dead and gone, they're not gonna remember you as the guy who refused to watch the Resident Evil Netflix show. So that's true. It's okay. To let it go. <laughs> that's, that's true. Yeah. Well, uh, speaking of sort of other survival horror media, um, I tried to get you um, on this uh, on this show last week, but you said you would be busy watching the Silent Hill transmission, and I was like, yeah. "Oh yeah, that's right. That is that day." So yep. how about we talk about it? I I. I I don't know if you saw my video on it or not, but I have my pl- my pluses and my negatives. I have not seen anything from you on it. Um, how do you feel about what we saw about the game? And then how do you feel about what we saw about the movie? I think I did watch your video on it, and I think that we... The have one that has sure. Angela farting on Christoph Gann's face? Maybe. I kind of <laughs> went on a binge of watching uh, people's videos, and I think I would remember that, but I do... I, I'm pretty sure I've seen yours, and, and I know you and I... Are, are we kind of align on on what we're thinking of of certain things yeah maybe okay so i should probably give some context into my it. experience with silent hill mm-hmm. uh, so and i i've said this on the channel before like as a kid i never got into silent hill and i know that's shocking oh you got a survival horror channel you have to understand i was obsessed with resident evil like that was my survival horror game i mean that's why i'm so obsessive over it now to where you know we talk about it all the time um, but I was just, I, I played a demo and I thought it was pretty cool, but my obsession was Resident Evil. So, you know, now having the channel after years, it's something I always wanted to do, but like, let's try this series. Let's see why, you know, uh, there's so many fans for Silent Hill. Like, obviously it, it did something right. So let's try it. So I think it was about two years ago. We decided to go through, you know, one, two, three, and four and play them for the first time and, and, and get to experience that with everybody, you know, our, our first impressions with it. And, you know, Silent Hill 1 is, is is fantastic. And I'm one that I don't ever judge something for when it came out. I judge it for what it did for the time and yeah. how it, how you, it have to, I, you, you have know. to keep the context in mind. 
Yeah, you keep the context in mind and you understand what it did at that time. And, uh, you know, that's why I can watch movies from whenever. It it doesn't matter. I don't care if it's old. It can still be an amazing film and revolutionary for, you know, film. Um, And that's kind of how I I go into games. And so, like, I I really appreciate it. I thought it was a fantastic game. And I I really like um, how it's survival horror. And it's similar to Resident Evil, but so different. It's so such a different type of horror. Really you know is. what I mean? It is not a yeah. copy of Resident Evil, which is what Konami, I think, originally wanted. It's, it is, yeah. And uh, and I think that's what, you know, like, I was like, okay, I get it now. Like, I'm starting to see it. And then Silent Hill 2. <laughs> Holy crap, man, that one stuck with me. Yeah. I, I, would ar- I would argue that my reaction and thoughts and impressions on playing Silent Hill 2 are probably some of the most memorable since some resident evil games like let's let's go back to like resident evil 1 2 3 like it's not on the same level for me because that was just perfect timing you know young nostalgia all that but man with silent hill 2 that game stuck with me and that's all i could think about it was just it was it was so different it was so tragic it was like it went to places that you know you resident evil is, is dark it's brutal uh but silent hill kind of went more into like the, the the psychological aspect of it and yes. touched on themes that I don't think I've, I've played many games that ever touched on themes like that. And, um, it, you know, it had just like Resident Evil, it had the music that was very iconic. It had locations that were very iconic. It had all the elements that made Resident Evil special, but it was its own thing. And it was just so different than what I played before that I, I, I would say that it's probably my second favorite game of all time right next to Resident Evil 2. Wow. Um, fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, people would say, like, well, how could you be a fan if you didn't play when it came out? I know. That doesn't I, make I sense. That, what? What? <laughs> what? Yeah, how can you be a fan if you didn't play when it came out? Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, like, coming God. on to it now, like, and this is before they announced the... I don't know, maybe they did at that time. I can't remember. Maybe that's why we played it. No? It was a maybe, year and yeah, a half heard, ago, almost two years we, ago. Yeah, we might have we started that series because they announced it, and we wanted to go back. I, I like to play, you know, where things started rather than, you know, like a new remake. I want to sure. go back and and appreciate it and so i think that might have been why um but uh yeah man i absolutely love that game and then three honestly was the perfect um sequel to one like three mm-hmm. was it was great and i i really enjoyed that and it kind of feels like resident evil one two three where the the controls and mechanics and it all felt so like it was polished and and complete in silent hill three like it it took some of the some of the flaws of one and two and it just felt like a really great game four was just so different i appreciate it i I get what they were trying to do there's aspects of it i love there's some things that frustrate the shit out of me overall it was it was good but it's nowhere on on the same caliber yeah i'm 50 50 on on four there's things i like things i don't i I played it like one and a half times and i was like okay that's about enough i'll just i'll just just like dive into story stuff and and leave the game on its own but yeah okay that's cool so you got into silent hill recently that is that is recently, really yeah. really interesting to to get that perspective and so as someone who got into well you know i just want to say the the difference the way i explain the difference between horror and resident evil and silent hill is that resident evil you're scared to walk through an area because of what of the monsters that you know are waiting for you and in silent yeah. hill you just look at a room and you're just like I don't want to go in there, <laughs> right? Like you, you don't even know if there's monsters there. You just, yeah. you just like, I just don't want to walk through this space. <laughs> so. and, then, and then you find out the demons are in your head, and yeah, it's just, yeah. it's, it's a, it's a mind fog. So, um, so the, the, let's start with the reveal of Silent Hill to uh, gameplay. You're going to be the person that I talk to about this. So, uh, how, how do you feel about what we saw? It started walking through the streets, and then we met characters, yeah. and we went through the hospital, we saw combat, we saw monster designs, we heard dialogue. Um, what are your impressions? So, now that you got the context of how I kind of got into the series, um, and how I now I understand why so many people appreciate it. And you're not nearly as protective of it, because yeah. you don't have the old connection to it as well. So true true um that that is that is true but there there also is a part of me that Sun hill 2 resonated with me so much that i am kind of like i don't think it'll i don't i don't think the remake will ever just like resident evil 2 remake is, is an incredible game yeah. uh I, I i was the most hyped i've ever been was when they showcased it but i don't think it'll ever oh i know it will never replace resident evil 2 for me so i kind of feel like that with this like it could be really good but I don't think it'll ever take the place of the original. You know, there was just so much 
that just came together to to make perfection you know at yeah. that time um but i i so you know looking at at the the trailer um i mean obviously they kind of touch on the nostalgia with the music the music's good but it's the i think the atmosphere and the environments look incredible okay um silent hill itself obviously the fog is incredible and that's kind of a big deal um like all of the atmosphere and details in the environments look incredible i think what the only thing that really concerns me with it is sort of the mechanics of it and uh, and i do think that they've improved since the combat trailer which i don't even know why they've shown that like uh, that makes absolutely no hmm. sense to me for for a game that is so loved by so many uh it's it's big shoes to fill and when you know, and just this is my opinion. When I seen that combat trailer, while the environments and atmosphere looked incredible, um, the the combat and and mechanics there with that looked very indie. And you know, I play a lot of uh, indie survival horror games, Resident Evil fan games, and all that. And while you know, I take those for what they are because they're uh, passionate fans made by maybe a team of one or two, right? When I see like a, a studio that's undertaking such a big project. Um, then I know it's not a triple A studio, but they are funded by Konami. Um, and I see like some of the combat mechanics that were showcased in that combat trailer. Um, it looks very indie, very, very indie. And I know a lot of people say, well, Silent Hill 2 wasn't about the combat. It is a remake, you know, 20 plus years later. I feel like it should be, at least be smooth. And I'm not saying have James go around just, you know, beating down all these creatures, but it should be smooth and fluid gameplay, uh, polished uh, on the caliber of like, say, Resident Evil remakes or dead space remake um and so i was very at that point that's where i became very skeptical like mm. ah, i don't i don't know that i was i was excited but now i'm kind of backing away but this new one it looks like um it's been improved and um after seeing a lot of what i've seen it de definitely got me um back to being excited for it again i don't think it'll ever be near as good as the original i just hope that it kind of sits there as its own you know kind of retelling um right next to it but it'll never replace it um i will say like it was a bit jarring um the atmosphere and environments look so good but the i think it was angela in particular her her model looked very much like a like a kind of like the sims i think Corey said in our video it kind of looked like the sims like it just didn't fit um the rest derpy. of the environment derpy is the word i've heard uh, thrown around yeah it was just and it's this isn't i know there's oh my god the the debate online about this is insane yeah, it's too much this has nothing to do with sexualizing her at, at all. I want to just say that because right. I know, I know where those those arguments are. It, nothing like that. It's just it didn't really fit. The more I watched, and there was other scenes of it, I was like, okay, it does look good. Maybe that one shot, the lighting, or something was way off in that. But there's other times where they show the characters where their facial animations they look they look really good. Um, didn't bother me at all. And like I said, she had other scenes where it looked good. So, you know, like. The majority of what they showcase between the trailer and gameplay, it looked great. It got me excited again. I don't think that they're going to pick up on a lot of the nuances that made the original special, and I don't think it's going to be better or as good as, but I think it'll kind of be like its own retelling, and it'll be a fun thing to play, but yeah. never replace the original. Kind of like Resident Evil 2, but I think Resident Evil 2 seems to be have a little more polish than the Silent Hill 2 remake. Yeah, I, I think we could totally get it, I, I think there's three ways to look at it, or at least two. Like you, you can look at this game as how is it retelling the story of Silent Hill Two, and then you can yeah. also look at it as like how is this playing as a Silent Hill game, and then also how does it play just as a survival horror game generally. There's True. different things that we have to look at when we examine this as as public you know critiquing fans um the gameplay it might play great that's the thing like they might they might horribly fuck up a character or a narrative thing or the horror or, some, or the symbolism they might and and we're going to be upset about that but yeah. i also have to say is the exploration good how are the puzzles and you know, how's the combat is do i feel overpowered am i actually avoiding enemies to save resources like uh, how's the, how's the pacing of the gameplay experience how's the movement like there's so much more to the game other than the stuff that people are kind of looking at right now and so yeah. i'm i'm anticipating that possible 
feeling of, of that mixed feeling of God, I'm super upset about this aspect of the story, but like I did enjoy it in the gameplay that could happen. Yeah. And I think it's good to set your expectations, right? I think yeah. I'm going to go into it. Um, I'm going to go into it excited, but also cautiously optimistic about it. Understand what it is, try sure. to manage my expectations and it might be great. Uh, but the, like you said, there's so many elements that we won't know until we play it. And, Will Bloober understand all, again, the nuances of what made the original so special after all these years? And remember, the original didn't really get that great of reviews when it came out. It, no, it, it didn't. It took time it was, for people to... Yeah. Yeah. It didn't sell very well either. What's that? It didn't sell well either. Yeah, it didn't. It, it didn't. And, and uh, you know, over time, obviously, people appreciate it for what it was now. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, hopefully they pick up on a lot of that. And it's a, it's a huge undertaking. And honestly... You know, like we say, we watch these these trailers and we're like, okay, that looks really cool. You know, maybe I'm going to like this. Maybe I think the only the only trailer I ever watched where I was like, I love it. I can't wait. It's going to be great. And then it was great was probably Resident Evil 1 Remake. Um, you know, so that's kind of like I said, like you said earlier, it's too good. Uh, that was one I watched where I was just like, everything about it I love. Um, I, and then I played it and I, I love it. And, you know, sometimes I, I see these trailers and I'm like, I really want to be excited. I, I, I want to chase that dragon. Mm. Uh, but uh I don't know if it'll ever, ever be on that level, you know. How about the movie? Oh, I mean, that could go one of two ways, right? It looks, it looks like. Uh, I, I will say that I do enjoy the first Silent Hill movie. Um, you know, I watched it when it came out. I was like, oh, you know, I didn't play the game, so whatever. And then now I watched it again recently after playing the games. And while I could see why there's a lot of people that are upset about, you know, Pyramid Head being in it and stuff like that, I, for a video game movie, for what we got, I enjoyed it. It was it was fine. Um, you know, I, I liked it. Um, it's directed by the same director. You know, it kind of while I'm like, oh yeah, that that does look like it could be pretty faithful. It could be pretty good on the surface. It gives me a little bit of that welcome to Raccoon City vibe where like, oh, they're, they're pitching it as very faithful. It looks a lot like it, but it, you, you won't know mm -hmm. until you see it. And that doesn't mean I'm not excited for it. I'm excited to, to check it out, but I'm just I've been down that road before and I don't want to be burned. So I'm just going to go into that cautiously optimistic, too. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the yeah. right way. I like uh, like I talked about in my video, it there's a lot of scenes in the trailer from the movie. Like we've see we get to see like 10 or 12 different locations recreated from the movie from the game I'm yeah like, wow that that could be fun at least we get to see all these places and the, like that that could be a cool way to enjoy it even if like the story gets messed up or if it comes it does kind of come across as a little cheap uh, yeah i could see that and that might be good or bad i mean yeah. <laughs> we'll I, see. I mean we'll see we'll see i mean it, it comes across as, and some people said a, a fan movie, and that could be good, you know, if they're if they're, if they're actually faithful to the source material and it looks very um, much just kind of like the game, but as a movie, that might be good. Or it could look cheap and just be kind of rushed and skip over a lot of the important elements and just show you what you want to show you. So, hey, nostalgia, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it could go one or two ways. Um, did you see the teaser trailer for it? Uh, I saw the one that was on the transmission with all the inter with all the interviews and, and stuff like that. I haven't watched the actual 50 second trailer yet. OK, yeah. yeah I was going to say there actually is one. I didn't know about it either until somebody messaged me and they're like, yeah. And so I looked on YouTube and I was like, it's nowhere on here. They only posted it on Facebook for some reason, which I thought was really odd. Like, I know it's lower budget, but like that seems odd that they would have a teaser and just upload it to one yeah place like maybe I, I, I don't know i don't want to jump the gun here but it might make me think they don't have faith in it or maybe their promotional yeah. campaign's a little odd you know maybe this is just to generate hype and it's just going to be a really rushed what, what hey is, when I, is it I, coming out game. does it have a release date it's i think it's supposed to be this year i don't remember if it is set it before a release the game date. or are probably tied like probably timed right around it i, I let me I, I don't know i don't want to get it wrong Silent Hill 2 movie release, or it's called uh, Return to Silent Hill. Yeah. Um, release. It just says 2024. Okay. That's all it says. I would assume probably around the, you know, October area. It's just to drum up hype. I hope it's good. I really do. Yeah. I feel like Silent Hill definitely needs a win. Um, it's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I know your thoughts on the short message. I watched your video on that. Mm. Um, I thought, you know, it was fine. It was probably the best thing we've gotten from Silent Hill in a very long time. Um, it's the only you know, but thing. I, I, 
It's the, the, literally yeah. the only thing. <laughs> I mean, well, no. Asc- <laughs> well, I mean, Ascension, I'm just I'm pretending that it doesn't exist. And PT, I mean, sure, but like that. It's not really PT a thing. stands for playable teaser, doesn't it? Like, yeah. like it, it wasn't even like. Like if si- if the Silent Hill game had actually happened under Kojima, what we saw in the in that PT wouldn't have been the game. That wouldn't have yeah, been the game. Very it, that's, that was a demo of of something they could have made. So, yeah, yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you there. I th- I feel like that was just so. I think at that time Silent Hill fans were just starved and would take yeah. anything. And then this this came out unexpectedly and happened to be like a really cool playable teaser you know that yeah. there was a lot of hours you could put into it and every time you went around or did something something might change and it was just kind of a unique thing that was so interesting at that time that people really got behind it and then they pulled it which made people want it more and like i said it's like well, the less is more the 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 less you give somebody they get to play it and then you take it away the more they can theorize or imagine what it could have been and i think that's kind of why that took off um but yeah so like going back to this uh, ascension you know, I was like uh, excited. Let's check it out. It sounds weird. I don't know. Uh, and then all of a sudden, all the reviews and stuff came over, and all the people were talking about it. And I was like, oh no, mm-hmm. oh, <laughs> Silent Hill. I feel so bad for Silent Hill fans, man. It's yeah, it's it, like for that community, it's just it's just burn after burn after burn, and it's like Kojima or not Kojima. I'm sorry, Konami um, is just it's like they're not self-aware and when that first transmission came out it's like oh maybe it's finally coming back maybe this is the win that all silent hill fans wanted um you know not a good start uh but we'll you know we'll see there's townfall there's silent hill f that looks super interesting but um, we haven't again, heard kind of anything goes, about it in we haven't heard two anything. years which is weird yeah. what, what the hell's happening in those projects well, we don't can, know goes back to your problem too of like how does silent hills a town how does this happen now here yeah That's well i mean I was... they, they're they're retconning it that's why they're just saying it, it can you know this is psychological and it can happen the silent hill effect or whatever it's called the silent hill phenomenon. Or phenomenon don't even get me started on that <laughs> man i haven't thought about it in months and i'd like to keep it that way keep thinking about it and you might get some silent hill phenomena i might be see careful. it yeah i'm gonna end up traumatized myself and yep. wake up with a fog all around me and be like damn it they were right oh shit that means it is canon <laughs> shit. Well, it will be. <laughs> yeah but uh no um i'm looking forward to what they have um but man uh konami just really doesn't have a great track record so i hope maybe things can turn out it's it's exciting to see because i feel like personally indie developers have kept the survival horror genre the, the heartbeat going yeah. all these years well the well, AAA developers have just skipped out and man there are some fantastic indie survival horror games you know just two to, that come to mind uh Alyssa I absolutely love it it's one of my favorite games of all time and then you know Crow Country I recently played there's also <sighs> Signalist and there's just so many Crow um, so and good. then all of a sudden you know there's this resurgence of AAA survival horror games and it's very exciting to see that it's finally coming back I just hope they do well and I hope they're good you know like I I I, I don't want to see this this die out. I want the survival horror genre as a whole to just thrive, you know. I, I and, think uh, it's only gonna be in the indie scene though, because I mean, like, I don't think that you can do triple A horror uh, outside Resident Evil and their name recognition. Because I mean, look at Dead Space. The, yeah, the Dead Space Dead Space was really good. I mean, not everyone loved it, but it was really good. It was it won a lot. You know, it was a lot of high scores. Game Game of the Year nominations or whatever. It was a lot of people loved it. And now that team has been put on Battlefield, and there's going to be no sequel. And actually, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to cut you off, but I did talk to somebody who who confirmed that that information was incorrect. And oh, I don't, thank I don't, God! Okay, yeah, like that was that was a rumor that just took off, and there's they've never said anything. They 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 have no plans on not doing a two. They never said they're doing a two, but they never said they're not doing a two. Okay, well we'll see, that we'll see. I, I mean, if we can off. see a a, a follow up to Dead Space, whether it's original or not. That would yeah. give me a lot more confidence because, I mean, Callisto Protocol didn't do great, right? Yeah. Uh, Dead Space, maybe it did well, but it, I'm sure it didn't do well enough numbers to make EA really happy, you know, because the nothing other, makes EA nothing's going to make them happy. And then Silent Hill, I mean, Silent Hill 2 Remake, it's got a lot of buzz around it, but if it doesn't sell fucking 5 million copies, yeah. Konami's not going to be happy. Uh, so. I I think we're getting these little blips of these returns of hey new Dead Space new Silent Hill oh great uh, 
well, enjoy it while it lasts because I don't think yeah. I don't think this is going to be a resurgence of the AAA horror scene outside of Resident Evil because they sell they sell so much and we're going to have to stick with our indies, which isn't a bad thing, you know. Like I I mean, at the end of the day, I'll probably end up saying I like Signalis and Crow Country more than whatever the Resident Evil two, uh, the Silent Hill two remake gives us. Yeah, and that's good. I, I can to see have that them. happening. Yeah. And man, that made me sad. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, you have a lot of—I mean, your your um your concern um is warranted, right? I can I can see why you would say that. I I, I like to try to be optimistic, and you know, I like to, to try to be excited, but at the same time, like reality is reality, and some of the stuff doesn't pan out um the way we would like, right? And I guess there's two ways you can go into it, but regardless, the indie survival horror games are good yeah, and that's great. good you know what i mean we still have that and you might you might be right you know in the future it might just be on the indies and that's okay i mean i totally would love okay. to see these these giant rivals come back with just co- constantly trying to you know um outdo each other and actually making a good product and not just doing it you know for monetary reasons which their business is obviously they're gonna but you know remember a time when silent hill was you know, was competing with Resident Evil and they were both amazing in their own way. You know, like mm-hmm. that's kind of what I want to see again is that uh, competitiveness driving the um, innovation. Uh, some new IPs, some new IPs would be great. We are really in this like remaster, remake, uh, revision kind of era where everybody's just kind of like doing the same thing. And that's cool. And my childhood's coming back. But at the same time, I would like to see some new IPs from AAA developers. But thankfully, Indie developers are doing that i just kind of want to see that competition to drive this genre forward it's been lively lately it seems like there's just these games that come out of nowhere and impress us you know what's going to be the the hardest thing about the silent hill 2 remake is that if we like it if uh if we just like a lot of it dealing with the people who are upset that you don't hate it so yeah, that's going to be the worst part of it is if we like it and then people are like the people who have already decided that they hate absolutely everything about it. And that if I go on there or you go on there and you're like, you know what? I thought they handled the story all right. Or I don't this change of the characters. OK, or yeah, like if the the people who are going to be like you're shilling for Konami, you've how dare you you've betrayed like that's. That's going to be bad. That's already coming. You know that's coming. It's, it's coming, and it, it's already ongoing. I mean, that's the internet, right? Yeah. You're always going to get that. I feel like more so now than before, it seems to be more like of a, just constantly people just going at it over this stuff. You know, it's always been around. It's just kind of ramping up now. Um, I mean, that's okay. We can all have our opinions as long as people are respectful, but it's the internet. That's that's not going to happen. It's just... It's it's got to be expected. I've seen it a lot in the Resident Evil community. Resident Evil Two came out, and there was some very valid criticisms on it, but majorly, uh, it was very positive, right? Yeah. And then three remake came out, and man, that's when you started to get the the two sides and and people just going at each other. Mm-hmm. And you know, and then time goes on, and you start to see these games start to burn people, or you start to see, and it's just it's now it's unfortunately a thing, and that's just going to happen. Where if you do enjoy something, you talk about it, people are just going to go at you. If you don't enjoy something, there's going to be this very dedicated group that are like, if you don't like it, and then they go at you. It goes both ways, you know, and that's just kind of pick and choose your battles and choose what you follow on social media or the, the comments you read or try, try to just, totally. I guess, you know, like everything in moderation, everything, just keep an open, uh, just know that people are going to agree and then they're going to disagree. And at the end of the day, just agree to disagree, I guess. Well, you probably attract less of it than I do because I have a couple of major uh, critical videos on Resident Evil, I, my my three review and my village review, and and because of that, um, there are there's a certain aspect of the viewership that that sees those videos, and then they they wrongly assume that I'm yeah. the guy that's going to talk shit about every single new Resident Evil product because they're against it on principle. And I'm not. I, I'm not that yeah. guy. That's just it. I, like I don't like those games, and I'm telling you why. And then yeah. Resident Evil Four remake comes out, and they're like, "Oh, I can't wait to see Mayo tear this apart like he did RE3." And I'm on here. I'm like, "This game's fucking great." 
And they're yeah. like, you fucking sell Traitor. out. You sell out. <laughs> I'm like, what, what are you yeah. talking about? I, I was never trying to be like one thing here. I'm just saying if I think it's good or not. I'm a, it's, it's, it's like uh, you can count on me for not being happy with the new God of War games. But if I am, I'll tell you. Like I'm not just yeah. going to not like it on principle. And, and there's, I don't know, it's, it's a weird aspect of the viewership. And I, I'm sure you, you've, you've, you've seen oh, it yeah. here and there. Yeah. It's a thing, you know, if it makes you happy and it's something you're excited about, that's good, right? You know, be excited about it, talk about it. If it's something you're upset about, talk about it. The thing is, at the end of the day, there's always going to be people that read it on the surface that don't look too far into it, that 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 will already formulate their minds before they even watched your video based off of your title or your thumbnail or the first two seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, that's always going to be a thing. But the, the thing is, if, if you talk about stuff and you're legitimate uh, and you're true to your thoughts and, you know, over time, people do change. But if if you're true to who you are, and you give your thoughts you may get a lot of those comments that you know but you will develop a very strong uh, community that are, are like-minded like you or they enjoy the content you put out you'll build a strong community there will always be people that will judge it on the surface or just go after you because they disagreed with something you said that's the internet and that's why you just pick and choose your battles and you just try to at least do things you enjoy if you enjoyed making the video if you enjoyed talking about it um others will too you know and that's kind of the way i view things is um, I generally, you know, will speak my mind, um, but I try to focus on things that I do like, um, and some people will be against that. And that is just what it is, you know, inspiring final words from JJ, uh, residents of evil. Um, <laughs> is there anything you want to pitch was well, uh, something you got any projects in the pipeline before we go that you want to talk about? Thank you. I mean, we always, we got some stuff going on. If you guys want to see, uh, fans, uh, give their take uh, on a faithful adaptation of the story from Resident Evil 1, the iconic story, The Keeper's Diary. Uh, check out our fan film that is going to be coming out here soon. Uh, very, very excited to see everybody get to check that out. I've gotten to watch the rough cuts of it. And man, I, I think honestly, it's the most faithful adaptation of a, of a Resident Evil property. Um, you know, everybody that was on board is extremely talented and extremely passionate about the series. You got people like Charlie. Uh, Joe White was just confirmed as a voice. So we got we got the original Chris Redfield from Resident Evil oh, 1 oh. as the Keeper. And then we got, it's like the multiverse. And then we got the voice of Chris from Resident Evil 1 Remake is the voice of the Keeper. And that's that's super cool. So, man, I just, I, I just, I, it was it was honestly um, an amazing experience to get to be part of that. Very thankful for, you know, to everybody who contributed to that to make it possible. Uh, again, this community, it just always blows me away. And I think a lot of people just want to see that faithful adaptation of something. And I think that the team really did an amazing job. And I'm excited, um, you know, for when that does release. Uh, other than that, if you just are, you know, you enjoy the Resident Evil series, doesn't matter what part of it. We all have conversations uh, about all of it. Uh, just check out the channel. And I just want to say thank you so much for bringing me on. I love having these conversations. And uh, I do feel like you and I probably could have talked for hours upon hours, but uh, it was, it, I, I did enjoy, yeah, I did enjoy being on here. So thank you. Well, let's see, uh, yeah, let, let, let's keep in touch. I'm curious what you're going to think about some upcoming titles. And hey, like if you see any cool uh, indie survival horror titles that come out that maybe I haven't heard of, you know, send them my way. Oh, I'd love to check them out. That's how I hear about all your these things. Yeah. Oh. definitely all right well everyone um hope you've enjoyed the talk uh thank you very much to jj from residents of evil for joining us for this uh fun little talk about camera angles and old school survival horror games and the new games and the movies and it's been it's been pretty fun uh so uh thanks everyone um leave a comment check out jj's page he's showing a really cool aspect of the resident evil community that maybe some of you haven't seen before um, all right, everyone, this is us saying goodbye. Bye.